Do I need to plug anything for DADT? No, that's my question. That's what I have over here. So you're going to have everything plugged in except for the main thing you're looking for. In our case, we want just DADT. You have to have all the other information plugged in. Are you with me still so far? Do I have everything else? Do I have an R? What does it say my R is at this certain time? So when, when this time comes about, my radius is 30. I don't even care what the time is, do I? I don't care. My radius is 30. Do I have a DRDT? Three. So we're going to have two pi times 30 times three feet per second. In fact, I'll use the unit so you see it. 30 feet, right? 30 feet times 3 feet per second. Why am I showing you this? Well, we should end in an area, right? Can I say the area is increasing to 15 feet per second? No, because that would be linear. Area should be in square feet, right? Are we going to get square feet? Absolutely. So we're going to get, oh, what is that? 180? What we've just found out is that for this specific oil spill, our area is increasing. When our radius is 30 feet, our area is increasing at 180, unless I did that wrong. Oh, I forgot my pi. That's important. Yeah. That's a factor of 3.141592. Right? <laughs> is that an okay answer? Or do you know? The this is great. Yeah. Now, if, you, if it asks, it could give you something more realistic in the back of your book, but this is the exact a pi would give you approximation. It says that multiply 180 times pi. That's how much a square footage is increasing per second at this exact moment in time, and that's what we're talking about. Do you guys understand the idea of related rates? Yeah. We're going to try maybe one or two next time, not a whole lot, because this is basically the idea. It's an implicit derivative, just with respect to time. The problem is going to give you everything else. All right, our last related rates problem. Here's the idea behind this problem and behind every related rates problem. Basically, we're trying to relate a formula that has all of our piece of information together, and we're trying to relate it to time. So we're taking derivatives with respect to time in order to figure out rates of change. And that's our, our whole idea, rates of change with respect to time. So in our problem here, here's what's going on. You're launching a rocket from the ground, and you're going to televise it. So what you want is this automated camera. And you're going to set it up at ground level, and you want to make some computer program that's going to watch it. It's a very sturdy camera. Have you ever seen the people watching rockets and they're all zoomed in? It's like, looks like crap. <laughs> but you don't want to be that guy. So you're like, well, you know, we're math dorks. So you want to set up this automated thing that's going to go, and, and the angle is going to be perfect to keep that rocket centered in its graphic the whole entire time. You get the idea? That's the plan. So what we want to do is, if this rocket is climbing at 600 feet per second when the rocket's at 4,000 feet, how fast will the angle of elevation have to change at 4,000 feet to keep up with the rocket? Well, now here's the deal. When we start out, this distance is going to be fixed. And let's say that we're 3,000 feet away from the rocket. So our camera is not going to move, and the rocket <coughs> is going straight up. Do you get the idea? Now, because we have this rocket's height, the rocket's height is going to be changing. Are you with me on that? So we can't just call this 4,000 right now. We do have to call it h, because that is a variable that's going to be changing throughout our problem. So our rocket's way up here. I don't know how to draw a rocket. Uh, rocket. That looks like an arrow. I don't know. Rocket. Whatever. <laughs> I'm close to a rocket. It's a flying arrow. I'm not a math dork. OK, so we've got this. This rocket flying, it's going to be h feet high. We're going to figure out when h is 4,000 what we're going to be doing on this. But when we, when we come up with our, our problem here, I told you there's a few things we need to do. The first thing we've got to do, assign some letters. Assign some letters to what we're, we're working with. So, of course, we like to have, what, what's one thing that we're, we're going to be relating? Time. time is definitely one of them. So, T for time. What's another letter that we might use? Good. Height, H, we already have that on there. So H for height. Anything else that we need? We have the time. We've got the height. There's one more relationship up there. Was it? 
not acceleration. The what? Angle. The angle of the television. So we have to have something to do with the angle of this. Let's see if we've related everything in our problem. Here's where you read through your problem carefully. Okay, if we've missed anything, if we left anything out, then we haven't assigned enough letters. A rocket's climbing at 600 feet per second. When the rocket is at 4,000 feet, that's a height. We have something for height. How fast is the angle of, ele oh, angle of elevation? That's our angle, so we needed to have that. How fast will the angle of elevation have to change? That fast, that's a rate of change. So we need something to do with time. So we have our time up there, we have our angle up there, we have our height up there. Okay, this is back to our height. So we have all the letters that we're going to need right here. Are you with me on this? Now, we don't necessarily have to have a T in the formula we're about to write because we're going to take a derivative with respect to T. We don't need the T, but everything else must be related. That means I'm going to have to have a formula that relates the height and the angle. Does that make sense? So if I call this my angle, my angle of elevation, if I call that my angle, I need a formula that relates height and angle. I, I need to have that. Is it Pythagorean theorem? Because you know what a lot of people do, they go, oh, right triangle, Pythagorean theorem, that covers everything. <laughs> Does that cover everything? No. no. That relates this and this and that, but it doesn't relate to angle, which is our main question, right? So if you use Pythagorean theorem, sure, you can come to the formula. And sure, you can work some of it out, but it's not going to have the angle relationship that we are looking for. Are you with me on this? So, can you tell me what incorporates an angle with this? What is that? Inverse. It doesn't have to be an inverse. It doesn't have to be solved for theta. It just has to have theta in it. It just have to has to have the height in it. Okay? Tan. Tan would do it. Tan is opposite over hypotenuse, yes? No, it's not. Opposite over adjacent, yeah. What is opposite over hypotenuse? Sine. What's adjacent over hypotenuse? Cos tangent. Oh, no, I'm just tricking you. Got you. Yes, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So does our does our tangent of theta have to do with the material that we have on the board right now? Mm -hmm. Are you seeing where I'm getting that from? So tan theta. <coughs> equals, okay, what was it again? What over what? Which is specifically in this case what? <coughs> Does that relate everything we wanted to relate? Does it relate the angle and the height, basically, is what you're asking? Are you okay on where that's coming from? You've got to have an angle down there somewhere that's typically dealing with some trigonometry. If it doesn't involve an angle, you probably don't have to use trigonometry. But this one, we certainly do. Now, the next thing after we assigned our letters and we made our, our formula was what? What did we do? Okay, so we took a derivative of the time. Actually, before that, we identified any rates of change. Uh, that's what we did as well. So let's identify any rates of change that we have. Can you read any rates of change right here? Any rates of change? That's a rate of change, sure. What is changing at 600 feet per second? Is it the angle, the height, or the time? What is it? The height. Here's how you write that. If your height is changing with respect to time at 600 feet per second, what would the change in height compared to time be? What is that? DHDT. Yeah, DHDT. That works. This is the change in height with respect to time, and you know that 600 feet per second. Actually, we'll get a little bit more fancy. Is it a constant 600 feet per second? It doesn't say that. So this is specifically at 4,000 feet. So it's defined at 4,000 feet that it's climbing at 600 feet per second. Uh, rockets, when you have a, a source of propellant, they don't climb at the same rate. Typically, those, those rockets that take off from the ground increase speed and increase speed and increase speed and keep going and going until they reach their escape velocity and find that they're gone. Does that make sense? So right here, at this 4,000 feet mark, we're increasing at 600 feet per second. That's our, our change in height compared to time. H is 4,000, right? The height at, at when H is 4,000. Yeah. Exactly right. When H is 4,000. Let's go ahead and let's try to find this. What we're looking for is, okay, well, we want one more thing. 
how fast will the angle of elevation change? That means, how can I write how fast will the angle of elevation change? What is that? D theta dt. That's the change in the angle compared to time. Does that make sense to you? The change in the angle. This is how fast will the angle of elevation have to change. That's the change in the angle compared to the time at 4,000 feet. This is what we're looking for, right there. I'm going to kind of recap just a little bit to hopefully one more time go through this with you. So what we do, usually you can have a picture, something to do with a picture. Here we have a triangle because we're launching a rocket and we have this angle of elevation where the camera's watching the rocket go up. Just hopefully nice and keep it centered in the, in the camera space. Are you with me on this? So we identify everything that we need to do. We have our height, we have our angle, we have our time. That's fine. Come up with a formula that relates those things. That's really on you guys. The formulas usually aren't, aren't horribly, horribly bad. But you've got to find one that works for you. In our case, we know that tangent of theta is height over 3,000. 3,000 was a constant. H, that's our, one of our variables we need to relate. So that does it for us. Then we go ahead and we, we identify what our rates of change are. The height is going to be changing at 600 feet per second. This is the change in height compared to time, 600 feet per second. What we're looking for is the change in angle right there, the change in angle with respect to time. Both of them have to occur when the height is 4,000 feet because we want to, we, maybe that's our, our marker we want to make in our computer program that's an important place for us. I don't know, I don't do computer programming, but maybe that would be important for this particular one. What do you do now? What do you do now? We have our letters assigned. We have all our rates of change, rates of change done, and we're looking for this thing. We have our formula. What do you do to this formula? What are you going to do? Take the derivative. Yeah, take the derivative. Let's go ahead. Let's take a derivative of this. Take a derivative of that with respect to what? Let's do it with respect to time. So this is implicit differentiation with respect to time. Go ahead and do that real quick. Or at least get started on it. maybe as a hint for you, if you're struggling with the h over 3,000, you could write this as 1, 3,000 h. So make things a little bit nicer. <coughs> really wouldn't matter all that much, but you could do that. You could, you could do that as well. That'd be fine. Um, now, before we get going, I didn't get a whole lot of enthusiasm on this side of the board. Are there any questions over here? Are you okay that we had to identify h and theta and t? No? Yes. You sure? Are you okay on seeing where the tan theta equals h over 3,000 comes from? By the way, the reason why we get this, the reason why we do this ahead of time, is because this is going to be part of our problem. You're going to have a D